Hey, well, good morning, everybody. I have 11 o'clock on, uh, on my phone, so we'll go ahead and get started with today's training. So I just want to welcome everyone and thank you for being here today. My name is Amy Jewett, and I am the Invasive Species Coordinator at the Western Pennsylvania Conservancy and the Pennsylvania Natural Heritage Program. And I am joined with uh, Kirsten Carlson. Kirsten, do you just want to take a moment and introduce yourself? I am Kirsten Carlson. I'm the uh, Associate Information Manager for the Natural Heritage Program at the Western Pennsylvania Conservancy. And I assist uh, Amy with um, mostly the, the back end technical side of the IMAP Invasives Database. Thanks, Kirsten. And Kirsten will be helping to answer questions uh, during today's training. Um, so as far as questions, if you, if you do have any throughout the training, feel free to use the Q&A to ask your question and Kirsten will do her best to answer that uh, while the training is going on. And at the end, if we have time, we will also try to take questions at that time as well. So again, please use the, the Q&A if you have a question. Um, today's webinar will be recorded. And so in case um, you know, you'd like to look at it again uh, at a later time, that recording will be sent out later on. And for anyone who wasn't able to join live today, that recording will be passed on to those individuals. Um, and also as far as the scavenger hunt and information that will be provided after the training is over today, I'll be sending out a link to the story map, which is the presentation that I put together today. There's a bunch of uh, links and other resources in there that you'll be able to check out at your leisure. Um, and also I'll be sending out a spreadsheet of information related to the actual species that are part of the checklist. Um, so you'll be getting a lot of uh, up, you know, follow up information after today's training. So just wanna make sure that I mentioned all of that. Um, but without further ado, let's jump right into our training and talk about this year's scavenger hunt. So um, the scavenger hunt is actually something that is now in its second year. Uh, we hosted this for the first time last year and it was very popular and so I wanted to do it again. And the purpose of the scavenger hunt, at least for this year anyway, is to try to put a, um, a spotlight on invasive species that are still being sold commercially and um, the impacts that those species can, can have when they escape into our natural areas. And so um, a lot of the, the plants, actually most of the plants that are on this year's checklist are ornamental species that either currently are being sold um, or ones that you know, maybe have been banned in certain locations, but uh, a lot of these are still unfortunately available for sale, um, including in Pennsylvania. Uh, we'll also be talking about a few species that I term early detection. And so that essentially means that these species are ones that are not yet found in Pennsylvania, but we do wanna be aware of these species because if we see them, we wanna make sure that we know that that's one that needs to get reported as soon as possible because it's one that can hopefully, um, you know, the, the spread of it can be prevented if it's reported early. There is also a few insect species on this year's scavenger hunt checklist. And so we'll be um, highlighting those as well. Okay, so information as far as what you'll need to know to participate in the scavenger hunt, uh, we'll go through the who, what, when, um, uh, where, and why. So the who is each of you uh, and your technology of choice as far as how you want to report the information that you are out finding. So you can use uh, either a smartphone, a tablet, or a desktop or laptop computer. So whatever is most convenient for you. Um, and you'll be searching for and reporting both presence and absence information, uh, as well as photographs for 15 specific species that have been um, already uh, determined and they're on this year's um, species checklist. So you'll have the entire month of August to go out and search for these species. So August will be here before we know it. I can't believe it's already almost the end of, uh, of July. So from August 1 to August 31. And uh, the where you'll be searching is in local natural areas that are open to the public. So places like parks and forests and water bodies like ponds, lakes, and rivers. Um, if you are searching on private property, make sure that you are first obtaining the permission of the property owner to be there and to record information on their property. That's really important. 
And I would recommend only surveying for the insect species on private property. The reason why I'm not recommending looking and, and reporting any of the invasive plants that might be on private property is if, for example, someone has um, you know, a burning bush planted in their yard, ultimately that is not something that we want reported in IMAP because you know, the, the ultimate goal of IMAP is to be able to manage the species that are being reported. And we're not gonna be managing species that are found on, in someone's backyard, essentially. Um, and, and so I would just recommend, again, you know, if you're going to be on private property, only searching for those insect species and also making sure that you're obtaining permission to be there and to report information. And so the reason why we have uh, this, this event um, and we're looking for these particular species is that they are all known to have some kind of significant negative impact um, to our state, uh, whether that's to uh, our native species and their habitats or to the economy. And so by reporting these species to IMAP invasives as part, of, uh, as part of the scavenger hunt, you are helping natural resource professionals to get a better understanding of where these species are located so that they can ultimately go out and perform the management that needs to be done in order to control the spread of these species. And for some of them, maybe even eradicate their populations. So uh, as part of this event, um, there will be prizes that are given away to five lucky individuals. So very exciting. Hopefully that's an incentive for some of you. Um, and I'll be talking a little bit more about the prizes and how to qualify as a prize winner at the end of this training. Okay, so let's jump right into the species list. So again, there's 15 species uh, that you'll be searching for. Again, each of these are considered invasive either in Pennsylvania or in surrounding states and provinces. Some of these have not been found in Pennsylvania before, and they are therefore considered that early, those early detection species. And in the list that I'm about to show you, those early detection species are marked with an asterisk, so you'll know which ones those are. So there's eight terrestrial plants that you'll be looking for. So that includes um, burning bush, starting here on the left and going to the right, burning bush, Norway maple, butterfly bush, and Japanese spirea. And also you'll be looking for different species of bamboo, um, Chinese or Japanese wisteria, hardy kiwi vine, and garden valerian. So those are the terrestrial species that you'll be looking for. There's also a handful of wetland and aquatic plants as well. Again, from left to right, looking at the images here, we have yellow iris, water lettuce, alligator weed, and water soldier. And of these four plants in this series, uh, alligator weed and water soldier have both not been found in Pennsylvania before. So if they are found, that is a very important um, discovery and one that we definitely would want to know about as soon as possible. So these are those early detection species that I mentioned earlier. And then the insects that you'll be looking for uh, include spotted lanternfly, Asian longhorn beetle, and hemlock woolly adelgid. And over here on the left, these two images, I'm sure many of you are already familiar with uh, spotted lanternfly. It's a highly regulated species in our state and unfortunately is seeming to continue to spread to new areas, but it's still one to be looking for, especially in some of the places where it's being newly found at. So these images are um, the different life stages, some of the different life stages that spotted lanternfly will go through here. It's a, a nymph and here is a, an adult version of spotted lanternfly. Asian longhorn beetle is one that we have never found in Pennsylvania. If it is found, uh, we definitely want to know about it. This is a very high priority uh, species that in the locations where it's currently uh, being found in Massachusetts, Ohio, South Carolina, and New York. Uh, there are quarantine zones established for this species and there's a lot of money and effort being put into trying to eradicate it. So the things that you're looking for as far as Asian longhorn beetle is not just the beetle itself, which we can see an image of right here, but also the evidence of that insect if it's in a certain location. And here's some images of an egg site that a female beetle will chew an egg site into the, the side of a, a tree trunk or a branch and lay a single egg in there. And these are very noticeable if you, if you know what you're looking for and you spot something like this. So here's some images of an egg site uh, fairly up close. And here is a little bit farther away of what they look like on a tree trunk. So if you see something like that, um, this is also you know, evidence of you know, the beetle being present in an area. So you're looking for this as well. 
Also, hemlock woolly adelgid is the other insect species that you'll be searching for. This is only found on hemlock trees on the underside of the needle. So you actually have to take the branch and turn it over and look on the underside um, of the tree in that way to see if the, the tree has the species on it. So that's the checklist for this year. Those are the species that you'll be searching for. And as I mentioned at the beginning of today's training, um, I will be putting together a spreadsheet of information that has a bunch of um, uh, links for online that will um, provide more information on how to identify some of these species, because I'm sure uh, not everyone is familiar with all these different species that are on this year's checklist, as well as the places to look for them, because you might not um, you know, find alligator weed in the same place that you would find a butterfly bush. So it's important to know the kinds of habitats that you want to be looking in. So that will be information that I will send out after today's training. Some of these species, plants and insects, um, may look similar to some of our native species or other exotics that are present in our state. And so that spreadsheet will also provide information on some of the lookalikes as well. So I put this in here just as a suggestion. This is not something that you have to do, but it might be helpful just to kind of get a better feeling for um, where these species are being found is to look at some of the distribution data for them ahead of time. Um, and knowing that will be something that you can then have a better understanding of how widespread some of these species are, or perhaps how rare they are in the state, because some of them are very common and some of them have only been found in a, a few locations. So I would recommend using IMAP invasives as, as at least one source um, to look at that distribution data with. There are other places that you can look up the um, invasive species distributions with. And I would certainly recommend doing that because IMAP is just one place that tracks invasive species data. Certainly we don't have all of the data that's out there. We gather it as, as it becomes available to us, but I would recommend checking out some other sources as well. So EdMaps is another location online that tracks invasive species data. iNaturalist is another one that tracks everything, um, not just invasive species, but um, pretty much anything that's living, you can report that. The Biota of North America program and also USGS NAS, um, that last one is just for aquatics only. So there's uh, links here in the story map that you'll be able to click on when I um, send out this resource that you can then access these um, uh, online platforms if you aren't familiar with them already. I also put together a short video of how to use IMAP invasives to query for distribution data. So if you haven't done that before or you need a refresher on how to do that, you can just watch this video. It's about three minutes, so it's pretty quick and it'll walk you through how to look up that information in the database. So as far as you know, the scavenger hunt and the things that you'll be doing, you know, learning about these species is just step one. Going out and serving for them is step two. And step three is then reporting your finds, again, both presence and absence information to IMAP invasives. You do have a few options for how you can report that information to the database. Uh, I would say by far the most popular method that a lot of people tend to use is the mobile app for IMAP invasives. That is available for a smartphone or a tablet. And once you have it downloaded onto your device, you don't actually need an internet connection to use it. So it's very uh, convenient in that way. Survey123 is an, another application that is Esri-based. Um, they created that, that uh, application. And we have um, a way that we can use the Survey123 app and integrate IMAP Invasive's data fields into it so that you can actually use that app and collect data that will get submitted directly into IMAP Invasive's. And then finally, the online database itself um, is also available if you'd like to use that to create um, information that way. But with any of these methods, uh, these three options that you have for data collecting and submitting, you do need to make sure that you request a login account. So that's really important to do. I wanna make sure I just address this because sometimes people will ask the question, why you know, report absence information? What's the purpose of that? And um, so you know, it, it can be very helpful. And especially for me, for this event, it's nice to be able to just have you know, a visual way of going out and seeing all the places that each of you are searching. So that absence information is very valuable in that way, but it can also be very valuable to natural resource professionals as well. And say for example, you know, a certain species that infestation was found at a location, you know, this year and there was absence data reported 
a few years prior, that can sort of um, show a timeline that maybe this infestation is fairly new to the area based on there being uh, not detected information there previously. So it can be used in a variety of ways, uh, but it can also be valuable to those folks that are out doing management as well. Okay, so as far as uh, requesting a login account, I know many of you already um, have login accounts that are on the training today, so you won't have to worry about repeating this step. But for those of you who do not have a login account already, it's pretty easy to get one. Uh, all you have to do is visit uh, imapinvasives.org or paimapinvasives.org. And at the top of both of those web pages is a login button. And you can actually see here in this image um, in the background that there is a login button. This is the PA imapinvasives.org website. So you would just click on that. And then there's a form that you can fill out. It looks like this that will allow you to sign up for an account. Um, and once you do fill in that information, you should get an email um, pretty quickly afterwards from NatureServe, which NatureServe is the current developer of IMAP Invasives. And so you should get an email from NatureServe asking you to confirm your login account. So make sure that you do that, and, and then you should be good to go as far as having your account and it's ready and, and set. So the other thing that you do want to make sure you do as far as being a participant in the scavenger hunt this year is to join the Invasive Species Scavenger Hunt Project in IMAP Invasives. And this is what you'll be tagging all of your information and your data to. So every record you create should be tied to this project. So in order to become part of this Scavenger Hunt Project, you'll use your login account and log into IMAP Invasives um, online. You wanna make sure that you do it on the online version. The, the, app, the mobile app or the Survey123, you can't, um, become part of the project that way. So you'll need to log into IMAP Invasives online and click on the main menu in the upper left corner. So here's an image of IMAP Invasives. Here's the menu. If you click on that, you should see something that says projects. So if you click on projects and then type in the name Invasive Species Scavenger Hunt 2021 in the search box, you should see that project name appear. And then in the scavenger hunt profile page, which you can see here in the background, you should see some text that says request to join project, which you can see that right here. And so uh, if you click on that, that request will then be submitted. I will receive it and I will approve it as soon as I can. And I'll let you know, you'll get an email letting you know that your request was approved. And so then once your request to join that project is approved, you can start tagging your information to this project. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing a demo of how to use the uh, mobile app. So I'm going to minimize my screen here and I'm gonna start sharing my mobile device screen. So give me a moment to do that. Okay. All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about how to use the mobile app. So some of you may have used this already and you're already familiar with it and some of you may have never seen it before. So uh, this should only take a little bit of time but I do wanna walk you through how to use the mobile app. Again, this is just one of the ways that you can report information to IMAP. It's probably the most convenient one. Um, you can do this while you're out in the field and um, you don't have to have an internet connection in order to use it. You just have to download it onto your device ahead of time. So when you log into the app, you should see a few uh, text, a few text options here that just give you a basic overview of the different um, tools that are available in the, in, the, um, in the app. If you click, those um, instructions will disappear. And if you go in the upper um, uh, left corner to the menu, the first thing you want to do prior to actually reporting information is to set up your preferences. This is really important to do because it will um, kind of set you up to make sure that you're reporting and tagging all the information that you need to tag. So my preferences are already set up. For those of you who are using the mobile app for the first time, this will all be blank. So for the first thing, the jurisdiction, you do want to make sure that says Pennsylvania. And then the next thing asks for your IMAP Invasives username and your, um, your password. So your username is your email address that you uh, use to sign up for your IMAP Invasives login account. So you just wanna input, um, input your email address and your password. 
This next thing, this button that says retrieve IMAP list is really important. Please make sure that you're clicking that button. And the purpose of clicking that button, so I'm just gonna tap it now and you'll see what it looks like when I do that, is it's pulling information from your IMAP Invasives profile that you've already set up online and all of the information that's already in there, including your uh, affiliated organization and any projects that you wanna be a part of, such as the scavenger hunt project. So you wanna make sure that prior to setting up information here in the mobile app, you've got everything already set up in your account online, then that retrieve IMAP list button will essentially pull that information from your online profile into your app. So again, making sure that you click that button, that's really important. The next part of your preferences is how you want to view the species list. So you can view either just the scientific name, you can view just the common name, or you can view both at the same time. I just have mine set to scientific names. And the reason for that is sometimes um, a various species can be known by different common names. And so if you are looking for a species under a certain name and we track it under a different common name in IMAP, you'll probably have a hard time finding it in order to select it as the species that you're looking for. Um, but if you choose just scientific name and you are familiar with scientific names, then you, know, you won't generally have any trouble finding the species that you want. You could also do both and then both the common and scientific will show up and you probably could still find it fine that way. I just have mine set to scientific, that's just my preference. There's also the option to customize your species list. And the purpose of this, so right now in um, Pennsylvania IMAP, we track uh, close to or slightly over 400 species of invasive plants, animals, and insects. So there's a lot. I'm just gonna kind of scroll through and you can see I'm still in the A's here. We have some B's coming up and some C's. So again, this, the list is really long. It could take a while to scroll through. But if you select just a few species, and I'm just gonna do that here and say, okay, and I'll show you in a little bit once I create a test record, now what you can do is you have the option that when you scroll through your track species list to select the species you're looking for, you don't have to scroll through 400 species. You can only scroll through like three or four and it takes a lot less time to do so. Um, there's also information about setting your picture quality. Mine's always been set to 50% and that seems to be fine. You also have the option to save any photos that you take with your app to your device's library. So that's an option if you want to check that. Then it's asking you about the default base map that you want to have. So again, thinking of what you would generally see in Google, the satellite and aerial imagery is where you can literally see like the green on the trees and you can kind of get a sense of where houses and water bodies and all that are located. The road view is kind of more of a drawing type of base map. So again, just based on personal preference, you can choose whatever you want to do there. And then there's some other things in here as far as the measurement system. So uh, either feet or acres are your options there. And then your default project. Again, for this particular event, you do wanna make sure that your default project is set to the invasive species scavenger hunt. The only way that's gonna show up in your app is, it, is if you already have it set up in your profile online. And then you use that retrieve IMAP list button to pull this into your app. So again, making sure that you do that, that's really important. And then your default organization. Same thing, you wanna make sure that this information is set up in your profile online, and then you can pull it into your app. And then once you have all your preferences set up, you can click the save button down there at the bottom, and you're ready to go ahead and start creating um, observation data. So all you do is click that big green button up at the top that says add observation, and you can um, uh, take a photo using your camera, or you can select a, a photo from your library, so I'm just gonna select a photo that I've got already here in my phone's library. Let's take a uh, picture here. And uh, there's a new thing that the, the uh, mobile app started to be able to do is to pull uh, information as far as the location and the date that gets automatically saved with an image. It's able to pull that information uh, from the photo into your app. This particular photo that I chose here was actually one that I got online, so that's why it's not pooling that information. But just one more way that the app is now just a little bit more useful. So if I now want to choose the species that um, I found, I would click this drop down that says none selected, and this will give me the whole species list that I can then go through. 
However, if I choose that custom list, which I talked about a little bit earlier, now we can see there's only a handful of species that pop up and it's a lot easier to sort through. So what you could do for the scavenger hunt is just do a custom list of the 15 species on the scavenger hunt list. And then all you have to sort through is just those 15. So we'll choose butterfly bush for this one. Here it's given you the option to say whether this is gonna be a presence record or a not detected record. So detected means presence, not detected means absence. So we'll say detected. The observation date will default to today. If you need to change that, if this was something that you observed yesterday or the day before, you can go in and change that if you need to. And the GPS then in your phone or your tablet should know your general location where you're, where you're located at. Um, and it will, it will um, uh, mark that appropriately as you can see here. If you need to, you can always uncheck that GPS box and you can then move your map around a little bit if you need to, but this looks pretty accurate, so I don't need to do that. One thing I will mention here that's really important is if you are standing 20 feet away from whatever it is that you're observing, your, your uh, mobile app will mark your, your point for where that, that species is 20 feet away from where it's actually located. And that's a problem because it's not actually marking it accurately based on the plant's location or the insect. So you wanna make sure that you're standing as close as possible, or if you're in a water body, if you're in a boat, that you're floating as close as possible to the thing that you're actually looking at. Again, that's really important to make sure that you're mapping it appropriately. Um, down here, then it's giving you information about the project that this record is gonna be tagged to. This is already filled in from my preferences. Same thing for my organization. Then you can fill in the time you searched in minutes. So I'll say I searched for 10 minutes. And then it wants to know the size of the area that contains that invasive. So you can choose from the different options that are provided there, as well as the distribution. So again, you can choose whatever uh, makes the most sense. And then you can include any comments here that you think would be appropriate um, that are relevant to your finding. I'm just gonna put test record here for now so that I know to delete this later on. And then I'm gonna sit, hit save. And now you'll see that a record shows up on your uh, mobile app home screen. And this is the record that we just created. You can go and make as many records here as you want and you should see kind of row after row after row of different records that will um, uh, show up. When you're ready to upload this data to IMAP Invasives, just realize that the data here on your app is not yet in the online database. You actually need to manually tell it to go into the database. So you can either check this little checkbox here on um, that individual record. Or if you have a lot of records, what you can do is go up to that main menu and say, select all, and then that will automatically check all your records for you. If you go back up to the menu again and say, upload selected, and we'll say, okay, then you'll notice that um, that record will then disappear from your home screen. And it'll tell you um, that you know, the, the record uploaded and that it did everything that it needed to do. So um, <clears throat> you wanna make sure that that um, uh, record does disappear from your screen. Here, I'm gonna start sharing again, just to make sure that we are all on the same page. So give me one moment. Okay. All right, yeah, so you wanna make sure that that record disappears from your home screen here. And that um, is essentially meaning that you did a successful upload, that your record is now in the database. If you would notice that that record continues to appear on your screen here on your app after you've done that upload process, you just want to go through that, that upload process again, again, going to the menu saying select all and then upload selected. And if it continues to remain on your, um, on your screen, it probably means that you don't have a very good internet connection or you're not connected at all. You do need to have that internet connection in order to make that upload um, go through. So that's how you use the mobile app. Uh, again, I would recommend that it is um, probably the most convenient form of data entry that we have, but the Survey123 app and also IMAP Invasives Online are also available. And so I'm going to go now back into my presentation and we will talk a little bit more about, oops, hold on one minute. I have to get out of here. There we go. Okay. So we'll talk a little bit about the Survey123 app. Um, again, another uh, application that you can download onto a, a smartphone or a tablet for use. 
So NatureServe developed uh, this special tool, um, which is essentially a, a form that gets integrated into the Survey123 app. Um, again, it doesn't require an internet connection like the mobile app. Um, it takes a little bit longer to create a data record with Survey123 than the mobile app does. However, the Survey123 app can do a little bit more than what uh, the mobile app can do. So for example, it can also create polygons and lines, whereas the mobile app is limited to just point data. It can also record treatment as well as presence and absence. However, for this event, for the scavenger hunt, you don't need to record treatment um, unless you want to. If you've done you know, some kind of management effort that you then want to record, you can use the Survey123 app to do that. So just like the mobile app, you can download it either from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. And then there is a setup guide and I'll click on this and show you what it looks like that has more information on what you need to do to get those IMAP um, data centric fields incorporated into your app. Uh, I did put together, this was a training that I did recently on how to use the Survey123 app. And there is also information in here on the mobile app as well. Uh, this training was about an hour long, but it, there's a video here from the webinar recording and you can watch that if you are interested in learning uh, more about either one of these applications if you'd like to use them. Okay, so we do also have information here again in the form of videos on how to use the online database to record presence and absence information. So this first video talks about how to record a presence record and the second video talks about how to record a not detected record. Again, this is information that you can look at at your leisure when I send out a link to the story map after today's training is finished. Okay, so now that's all about the scavenger hunt, what you guys need to do um, and everything that's involved. And now I wanna talk about what happens afterwards. So uh, as I mentioned before, the scavenger hunt will begin on August 1st and it will end on August 31st. And then after August 31st, you will have up until September 15th to answer all of your data, both presence and absence into IMAP invasives. And I like to give people a little bit extra time once the actual event um, ends, in case you maybe, for example, have some records on your mobile app that you forgot that you had, and then you, know, you have a little bit of extra time to make sure that they get uploaded into the database. Again, making sure that you're tagging all of your data to that invasive species scavenger hunt 2021 project. If it's not tagged to that project, it will not count. So again, making sure that it's tagged to that project is really important. And then after September 15th, uh, the, the data entry deadline um, will, you know, you won't have the option to enter any more information. And I will start to compile all of the data that gets submitted as part of the event. And I'll put together a brief data analysis showing all the places where people surveyed and the species that we found. And then this will be an analysis that I will hopefully be able to send out to all of you in uh, either fall or, or winter of this year. So you can look for that a little bit later. All right, now for the fun part, the prizes. So again, I, I love to be able to, to kind of incentivize these events and give out some fine items to a handful of people that participate. And so on September 30th, uh, I'll be choosing randomly five um, people um, to be the winners of the event. So to qualify as a prize winner, you have to enter at least one presence or one absence record into IMAP invasives for each of the 15 species. Um, and if you only enter 14 you know, records, it doesn't count. You have to enter at least one presence or absence for each of those 15 records. Again, tied to that particular project that I've mentioned. You don't actually need to record any presence information to qualify as a prize winner. Um, and the reason for that is maybe you're searching in areas where none of these species are, and, and that's okay. I mean, you, I think probably a lot of these places that people will search, you likely will find at least one or two of these species, but just know that you don't actually need to find anything. And if all you've recorded is not detected or absence information, you can still qualify as a prize winner. And that just shows me that you've gone out and you've participated, you've done your best and you searched and, and you were um, part of this event in that way. And so you would still qualify. So the five people who will receive prizes uh, get uh, a package of different things. So uh, the one item is gonna be a camping hammock that you can take out with you and kind of hang out in the outdoors. 
um, a gift card to moosejaw.com, a uh, IMAP Invasive Stainless Steel Water Bottle, and a hard copy of a field guide called Invasive Plants of Pittsburgh. And don't let the name uh, fool you. A lot of the species that are talked about in this really good field guide uh, are being found all across Pennsylvania. Uh, it just so happens that the group that put this together is an entity that's located here in the Pittsburgh region, the Pittsburgh Parks Conservancy, and that, that's why they titled it that way. But it's still really um, helpful, provides really good information uh, about a variety of different invasive species. So that is the prize package that five people will be winning. So good luck to all of you. And uh, that's all I have um, for right now. So I will open it up to questions and any comments that anyone may have at this point in time. And again, making sure uh, if you do have questions, please use the, um, the Q&A that we have available here in Zoom. Thank you, Autumn. Autumn says she's excited for this year. I'm excited too. <laughs> Okay, well, if we do not have any questions, which that's okay, uh, again, I'll be following up with all of you after today's training. I'll have a link to the webinar recording. I'll have a link to today's story map or the presentation that I just went through, and also a link to the or an attachment to the spreadsheet that I talked about that will have a lot of helpful resources as far as how to identify some of these species places to look for them and some lookalike species as well to be mindful of as far as what to also be searching for and not confusing some of these species with. So look for that email from me hopefully later today. Um, I'm also available uh, via email anytime you guys might have questions. My email address is here on the screen. It's ajewitt at paconserve.org. So with that, um, I guess I'll say good luck again to everyone. Thank you for your interest in this event. It would not be possible without each of you and, and your volunteering to be part of it. So thank you so much for your interest and um, I'm sure we'll be talking again really soon. So thanks everybody and have a great rest of your day.